Oh. Okay, so there. That's making me a little bit nervous. Ain't gonna lie. Welcome to the Sulu 46 Laboratory. And also welcome to the world's most unsuccessful YouTube channel. Today's video is pretty straightforward. There's one goal, and that is for you to watch this video and then tell me in the comments below, why do companies not make this alcohol stove? Some background info for you. I've never been a huge fan of alcohol stoves, but I know that there's a massive following out there. And on top of that, there's a lot of experts out there. So in my continuous quest to build ultralight backpacking equipment, I came across an alcohol stove that is relatively unique and I cannot find a manufacturer that makes it, nor can I even find the real name of it. So the process for today is gonna to be to rig up a very rough prototype just so that we can demonstrate the functionality of what we're trying to do. And then I want the alcohol stove experts out there in the comments to tell me why no one makes this. Now, all the YouTube videos I've seen and the instruction videos haven't gone into the name of it or any of the specifics, like how much alcohol you need or where the efficiency is and all that type of stuff. The only thing they have gone into is that you have a chamber full of alcohol and below it, another chamber with either a tea light or alcohol and you heat the upper chamber. There's a small pinhole in the top and the vapor then boils off of the alcohol and you light that and it's almost like a miniature blowtorch. So let's get some equipment together, build a prototype and take a look at it together. So for this project, we are gonna use a bunch of hex nuts, some 3D printed spacers, three threaded rods, two different size of washers, a tea light, one of these little containers to hold the alcohol, and a lighter. The fabrication portion is quite simple. One hammer, one small punch, one container. That was a little bumpy, but we're done. After the long, complex fabrication process of punching the pinhole, we begin the build. We are about ready. Phase one, move this out of the way. Phase two, keep a fire extinguisher handy. Okay, this is our device. Underneath here is our tea light. We're gonna light that. In here is alcohol or methyl hydrate. The tea light is going to boil or heat up the alcohol. The alcohol has a small hole it's gonna gain pressure and spew out the vapors. I'm gonna light the vapor, and then we're gonna put this pot on top, but this should be a jet. We've identified the tea light is too low, so we're gonna raise it. So the flame is starting to grow a little bit. We have identified that I did not do this properly. Here's my hunch. My hunch is the tea light is not hot enough to boil or vaporize the alcohol fast enough and the pressure is not building inside the vessel. 
I'm going to take a smaller vessel, cut a hole in the top so that it focuses the flame on the upper vessel and give it a second try. Now, most people would be embarrassed, but I'm not. I'm not embarrassed because we're learning together. And remember, you alcohol stove experts out there are going to tell me what I'm doing wrong with this whatever the hell kind of stove this is called. We're now doing something completely different. We've got an alcohol stove with no top that's going to go underneath there. Lighting. Whoa. Okay, so there. That's making me a little bit nervous. Ain't gonna lie. But you get the idea. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, so we need to engineer this correctly. And we understand now there's an issue. It actually still going, look. I think the hole is too small in the lid. Okay, so we had some carnage, but we're gonna give it another go. I'm gonna be a little bit safer this time. I think that the um, alcohol inside the con hole with the container was too high, and I think that this burned too hot. So obviously there's a balance here. We'll do some testing. So the stove experts, let me know who have done some testing like this and let me know what I'm doing wrong. We're gonna give it one more try, and I'm just gonna boil two cups of water with it turned down because that was like a blowtorch. Okay, trial number three. We made the outlet smaller. We made the hole in reverse so that it will filter the gas out. So it should burn lower and more control. We're gonna put a pot on it and we'll see how we do. I wanted to thank you if you're still watching the video because we're having quite a fun time. I've been at this for many, many hours. We're all set up again. We have half an ounce of alcohol on the top what I call the pressure vessel. In the bottom, we have a quarter of an ounce of alcohol. We have two cups of, you know, water out of the tap kind of thing. Feels a little bit cold in room temperature. I don't know, maybe something you'd get at a lake in the summertime. Let's put it on, run one more test, and then we're done. And then I want to build something safer if I continue this. So it actually took 26 seconds to Oh, much better controlled flame here. Still that going at the bottom. Oh, steaming some bubbles, but not quite. Well, there you have it, the uh, double burner blowtorch alcohol stove that, as you can see, exploded during the prototyping phase, but then uh, kept it together quite well afterwards. What I want from you, guys, is to forward this video to all the alcohol stove makers out there. Let me know why no one makes this. Is it because it's dangerous? Is it because it's considered a pressure vessel? I can design those type of things so I can overcome that. But if there's other reasons, like maybe it's inefficient, or it's too finicky, or uses too much fuel, or it doesn't boil fast enough, all those types of things, I need to know that stuff before I go down this road. Hope you enjoy. Whoa! <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. I'm Steve Evans, and I'll see you on the trail.